Um, Sally wanted me to go over scale and curatage. Um, so I thought I'd have uh, the rest of you along as well. Um, TJ say, says he's going to join us, but um, uh, possibly he's going to join us in about 15 minutes. Um, Sally, uh, you're doing bleeding indexes, are you? Yes. Um, what sort of results have you had? Sometimes fantastic, sometimes, sometimes okay one, little yeah. okay. Um, is that because the ones that are fantastic are actually doing what you showed them? Yes, the ones that are not so good just fail to understand what I'm trying to tell them. Yeah. Or I don't know, they are reluctant to change, maybe. Um, do they they see the bleeding index when you do it? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, Abby, are you doing bleeding indexes at all? Abby, can you unmute or are you busy? So I'll be back in a minute. All right. Uh, Azim, are you doing bleeding indexes at all? Yes, sure. And what sort of results do you get? See if I can motivate the patient enough. Yes. As you say, blood is a big motivator. I try to probe patient in, in front of patient, show him the blood, show him or her the blood. Yeah. Uh, most of my patients get motivated. Most of them, uh, they come back with fantastic results. But some yes. of them, yes, they don't. Uh, I, I don't get the desired results what I want. Yeah. So um, I have come up with an idea that I have started charging them uh, by the hour for my consultation at least. So they, whenever they come back to me for cleaning and uh, scaling, yes, I, I've started charging them by the hour or by the okay. time. Yes. So I think that is a big motivation for them because they are paying me Yes. So they they pay me and they go back and they invest time with their uh, you know cleaning and garden and everything. I think also it's a great motivator for you, because I mean I think if you're being paid for fillings and you're getting paid for crowns, yeah, but you're not being paid for dental health instruction, that's not a very great incentive. This is one big change which we have done for in our practice. Yeah, and it has been fruitful for us. Yeah, that's been good for us. Uh, do you have the bleeding index um, printed out? You can look yeah. at it and see you do. Um, have you do you change it once a year by the by the um, inflation rate? Okay, no, no, no. Uh, we have just started it. I mean, at some seven months back, we started the charging by the hour, so no inflation and nothing. Good. Now. Um, but you have it on the you have it on a on an Excel file on your computer. Uh, no, Stuart. I ha I have got them printed, and I use the printed sheet only. And I, I as you know, I'm not a very tech savvy. I don't even know what is an Excel file. Abba does this all this for me. Have you seen my Excel file? Yes, I've seen your Excel files. Yes. Um, have a look at it again, okay? Because. Yep. Um, uh, you know, when I was when I was in practice, and I could just look up and look at the sheet, and uh -huh. see thirty five minutes and charge for thirty five minutes, um, I thought it was a very fair way of doing it, um, yeah. and it wasn't just guesswork. Um, just let me write something down. Okay. Um. Have you included the cost of toothbrushes and toothpicks and things in your hourly rate? I'll be very fair with you, Stuart. I think uh, toothpaste and all these things don't matter if your consultation rate is, uh, you know, if your hourly rate is fine. So 
So I think I just give it to them. I mean, it yeah, is okay. Ex, ex, yeah. Okay, so you do include the items yeah. that they yes. need, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think it's awful charging patients, you know, for the, for, for say, say you charge them for a whole lot of fillings, and yes. you give them a toothbrush, and then you yeah. add on another extra rupees for that. Yeah, how does it matter if you add a dollar to your total treatment plan? Rather, you just put everything in and give it as a package. Now, do you have the... Um, uh, the, do you have toothpicks? Yes. What make? The one ones uh, you gave it to gave to me, Auburn's. Do you have any uh, Doctor Tongue? Doctor Tongue, no. Okay. Um, because you you can get those in um, in India. Okay, I don't have the, uh, I mean, uh, the proper person to contact to. If you have any contact of the company or the person, then I'll contact them. Uh, Sile, do you have you got Doctor Tongue toothpicks? No, I am uh, using the one Kashmir sent me. You've been using the ones from Kerala. Uh, what make are they? Some local make. Ashwin had sent uh, sent those to me. Oh, are they got smaller than? Oh, yeah. they're the little round ones. Yeah. Uh, I think Ashwin now has got some of the Doctor Tongue ones. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Um, I'll get in touch with him. Yes. Uh. Because the uh, 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 Azim, the Doctor Tongue ones are yes. almost almost as good as the um, Albans of the uh, Doctor Barmans. Okay. Um, they're just a little stiffer, but they're 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 as good. Okay, that's okay. that's a that's a good good news. Yeah. What about incidental brushes? I have the TP ones and the. Uh, Stim, there, there, there are lots of uh, interdental brushes available here. So I've got three sizes. You have, okay. Yeah. You, do you, are they TP? Yes, I have TP and Stim. There are there is another company called Stim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What uh, colored TP do you use? Uh, there is one uh, pink, blue, pink and blue. They're fairly small, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and I the same only... one, ones are uh, slightly thicker ones. Because ones I are have... blue and pink. Blue and I green. only use the green, yeah. mauve, and grey. Okay. I didn't use the small ones, okay? Uh -huh. I'll show you. Um, What do you do with a patient that's got um, four or five millimeter pockets or more? After you've, after you've taught them the uh, cleaning and they've got deep pockets, what treatment do you use? See, I steward, I either, uh, I tell them to come back after every two weeks. I keep probing them. And for uh, in in three months time, if their bleeding stops or bleeding reduces, that is when I decide whether to call in a periodontist for the pockets or send them to periodontist. Now you see, um, I'm going to show you in a few minutes about scale and curatage. Uh, we do scale and curatage also, yeah. Under under local anaesthetic. Yes, in some cases, in fifty percent of the cases, yes. You would not be. I would not allow you to do a scale and curatage on me unless I was completely numb. Yeah, you are absolutely right. We should have this in routine practice to absolutely numb the patient and then do the scaling and curatage. I mean, you can't do a curatage of granulation tissue. 
yeah obviously you cannot do a curatage but scaling yes i do scaling in without anesthesia at times yes and that yeah. i think is criminal yeah um because you see it's my experience that people if you do scan curatage which i'll show you in mm -hmm. a few minutes um you don't need all these periodontists and people the other thing uh, uh, azim is that if you could tell me that you're busy with patients from whatever time you work uh, now i'm just saying that if you could tell me that you're busy from the first thing in the morning to the last thing at night, six days a week. I'd okay. say, okay, refer your, your refer to a periodontist. Mm -hmm. But if you're not that busy, uh, do the scale and curatage. I, I uh, also think that it helps you build uh, a relationship with the patients better if you do the uh, the gum work. <laughs> You're right, Stuart. Uh, just a moment, huh? Just a moment. Just a minute. Let me just see how far uh, Tejas is. Sorry, Stuart. Yes. Hello. Yeah. I you gonna you ready soon? Yeah, I'm. I'm ready. I'm. I'm ready. Yeah. No, 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 I'm talking to uh, T. Jazz. Okay. Are you gonna be? When are you gonna be with us? Sorry. Come again. Just one second. Hello. Okay. Sorry, I was talking to T. Jazz. Uh huh. Okay, just one moment. Hi, Tom. Okay, what about Harry? No. Yeah, okay. If you could let me know as soon as possible, okay? Okay, see you Monday. Good. Cheers. Sorry. Um, now, uh, Siley, um are you taking more x-rays than you did a year or two ago? Yes. Yeah. Um, because I think a patient who's got pockets that are, you know, over uh, five millimeters, you need complete x-rays to be able to show them uh, the bone loss. Yes. Yeah. Um, are you taking more x-rays, Abby? Yes, sir. Started to. Good. Um, Azim, do you have a, 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 a holder for the x-rays? No, Stuart. I couldn't find a holder for my x-rays. Uh, let me know what um, let me know what uh, x-ray system you've got, okay? Okay, I'll send you the specifications. And I'll... Uh, I'll find out what they what they have in England, okay? Um, they have they, they, in India. They have Chinese make. They have Chinese holders, but they are not good. I've tried lots of them. They're not yeah. as they're not good. Siley, you using X-ray holders, aren't you? Yes. Siley, which make X-ray do you have? Or I mean, uh, the R B G one. RVGS Care Stream. Azim, can you, uh, TJS, can you turn us off? Okay. Uh, I've got SOPEX. I don't know my whole time. That's uh, RVG. Uh, 
sensor doesn't fit into the holder very well. Oh. Uh, Sally, how would you like to go back to not having your holder? No, no, it's a big help, time saving, and very useful in diagnosing. Yeah. Um, send me some photographs of you taking x rays, okay? Okay. That'd be good. Um, okay. Azim, once we get you a decent set of holders for the x-ray, you'll think it's wonderful. It is actually, Stuart, I, uh, I go to other practices and there are they have these very good, decent holders. But most of them got it, uh, I mean, I don't know, from, from outside India only. Yeah. Uh, Abby, your holders are not for the right film, are they? I use a traditional uh, hold, holders, uh, the RIN system. You do I, use the RIN system? Yes, yes. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm trying to get uh, uh, Eldo to, to get some uh, <coughs> rubber, rubber dams. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Something just fell on the floor. Um, I'm trying to get Elder to make some, uh, get some rubber dam stamps um, available. You don't have a rubber dam stamp, do you, uh, Azim? No, I have rubber dam stamps. You do? Yeah. Where do you get it from? Uh, I I saw it uh, at uh, I saw I mean I think you gave me one sample to me then I got it copied. You did. Yeah. Okay. Was so that I don't do, see, I don't do endo, so I don't use rubber dam. Abha is the one who does uh, mm -hmm. uh, root canals and all. So uh, my my endo my my rubber dam work is very limited. I, I actually it's very very limited. Yeah. That's a yes. strange thing to say. You don't use rubber dam because you don't do endo. Yeah, I don't. I don't do endodontics, so that is the reason, one big reason why I don't use uh, rubber dam. Um, if I only is... use it for two. I mean, I ask Abba, frankly speaking, I have no idea how to use rubber dam. I only ask Abba to put it on that particular tooth if I'm like, say I'm doing a class two filling. Because she's the um... one who can do it in 10 seconds. I'm the one who will do it in 10 minutes. Because you don't have it set up. My yeah. way. Yeah, I don't have a setup your way, and then I don't know how how to properly hold things your way. Right. Um, I'm sorry that uh, Ashwin isn't with us and Tejas because both of them use them for fillings. Yep. Hmm. Um, I use it for veneer cementation when I'm cementing my veneers, and I use it for class tools. For fillings? Not class two fillings, yes. Yeah. Not for class ones. Um, I just found it so much easier using rubber dam for everything. Um, the tongue's out of the way, the cheek's out of the way. Yeah. It the is patient, absolutely a delight to work with. Yes. Yeah, the patient can't talk. Yeah. Um, Let's just go ahead with the presentation, okay? Yep. Um, you can see uh, initial gum treatment procedures, can you, on the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, this patient came to me with um, a lumpy left central incisor missing, and he was unhappy because he had a little partial denture here. Um, so I took the tooth off the partial denture and... Uh, glued it in place. Uh, what I did was to glue it in place and then take an impression and had the uh, laboratory make uh, uh, two twist flex wires, or might even been three, I can't remember. Um, there seems to be two. 
Three. Three, yes. Yeah. Um, and then when he came back the next time, I glued, uh, I, I, um, I glued the wires in place. Um. I personally would not want to wear a little partial denture like that. <laughs> Terrible. Um, X-rays uh, of this anterior region uh, using um, panoramic X-rays is not very successful. Uh, you can't really see. Um, but you see, this patient here, I really would want complete mouth x-rays of this patient. Panoramic x-ray as well. Um, these are the bite wings showing some bone loss. Uh, as we've talked about before, the uh, x-ray uh, sensors that you tend to use in, in India, you've only got one size, yes. which is too small for adults and too large for children. Um, It just uh, upsets me the fact that the dental schools don't tell you that, so you, you don't even know you've got the wrong one. Um, but you can see on this x-ray here, you can see beautifully the bone loss, and that's so easy to show to the patient. Uh, so there's no tooth decay there. Um, you'll see a little bit later on how important it is uh, to take regular bite wings. Uh, Looking at the bone loss now on periapicals. This tooth here, pretty loose. Uh, that's not going to survive. Bone level here is pretty good, not bad. Um, interestingly, uh, just look at the mesial and distal of these two molars here. I'm going to show you something which will surprise you a bit later. So the uh, the bone loss around that um, around that molar there is um, pretty bad. Okay. Treatment plan was to do a bleeding index, plaque removal, and then reevaluate later on. Um, so my armamentarium would be the, uh, uh, toothpicks like this, either, uh, Dr. Barman's or, uh, um, Dr. Tung's. Um, I did not teach the, uh, yellow ones here or any smaller. They're just too difficult to do. Um, so, um, the mauve, the green mauve and, um, and the uh, black ones and the gray. Uh, I personally use the green ones and the mauve ones, as well as the toothpicks. And as you know, I carry toothpicks around my pocket so that after meals I can clean the uh, food away. Um, so the first visit I did a bleeding index, I showed him the toothpicking DVD. Um, I then taught toothpicking and this was his first bleeding index. Now, this is not the true beginning because he'd, he'd been to a dentist that I'd taught and uh, uh, he was doing some cleaning uh, before I did this bleeding index. So his original bleeding index would have been bigger. So here he is, uh, toothpicking. Um, so much easier to teach. Uh, I've said this to you before, that toothpicking takes about four visits to teach. Toothbrushing is about six or seven to get them to doing it really well. The next visit, I checked the toothpicking, showed the toothbrushing DVD, and I taught the toothbrushing. Um... 
Some people will say, oh, my patients won't come in all this time. So they won't do this and they won't do that. And I tell them that there's always some patients who are willing to do this. So with the patients that are good patients, um, then see them on the amount of times that you need to see them. Um, holding a, toothpaste, a, a toothbrush. Um, does anybody hold a toothbrush like this? Uh, pick up a pen and uh, take it in the palm of your hand like this and put your little finger underneath it. Do that. Do you do this, uh, Abby? Yes, sir, I'm listening. You put your little finger underneath. Yeah. Uh, have I talked to you about that, Azim? Yes. Instead of doing this, um, this is so much easier. Okay. Yes. Good. Um, and brushing 45 degrees, um, vibrating, not brushing, not scrubbing. And here, um, you scrub in and out like this. Does anybody do that? Sally, use that, don't you? Yes, good. Okay. And I'm very insistent on the fact that if a patient has calculus on their teeth, they're not brushing properly. Um, I had a patient of mine uh, come in yesterday for a cup of coffee. Um, and uh, I haven't seen her clinically for about 10 years. And she'd forgotten about brushing like this. So I got a toothbrush and showed her uh, how to scrub in and out here. Uh, she she goes to see a hygienist every six months. What a bloody waste of time. I told her that I like to have my teeth cleaned every 15 years. So the hygienist spends her half an hour flicking off a bit of calculus and going around just doing nothing at all. Just terrible. And the same thing here, although you don't get calculus up here, it's easier to scrub in and out here. Then one to two months later, I did a gum check, tooth check, tooth picking, tooth brushing. And he's gone down a little bit, but not significantly. Uh, I then introduced interdental brushes. I wouldn't dream of introducing more than one thing at a time. Um, you just want to get one habit change at a time. So I showed him the interdental uh, brushing DVD and then showed him the, um, I taught him uh, the green uh, brushes. Because he's uh, good at uh, interdental toothpicking, they then find that the interdental brushes are so much better. Uh, the next visit, check the toothpicking, toothbrushing, uh, and I introduced the mauve and gray. Uh, he was only using the mauve and grey in one or two places, so it was okay to uh, introduce two things at the same time. So here he is using the green, the mauve ones, and here the uh, the grey ones. So I reevaluated, and he really uh, is stuck because of the um, the pocket pockets that he can't get down. Uh, I also, on the chart, um, put where where he uses it, where he's using the gray and the mauve uh, brushes. Just to remind me, so when he comes in, I'm not sort of completely ignorant about where he's cleaning. So now he's ready for the scale and curatage, of which I'm gonna do one quadrant at a time. Um, and I, at the same time, I'm going to remove the lower left first molar uh, and place an implant later on. Um, there was a study down in, in the 1960s where they, Dr. Ramford 
uh, treated patients with scan curatage in one quadrant, gingivectomy in another quadrant, and two different flap procedures in the other quadrant. Um, this is what periodontists are very big on because they have to keep themselves busy and justify their three years wasted at dental school doing uh, um, doing the specialties. Um, there was no significant difference between all these different types. And the scan curatage is so much easier. Um, so uh, I did the scan curatage um, uh, on the, uh, the lower left. Then I saw him two weeks later to get him back to cleaning again because he's not going to clean very well for a while. Um, and then I did a scan curatage on the next quadrant, the upper right. So, as I've told you all before, you only need two scalers. You just need the Gracie 1718S and the 1314. Um, I go to some uh, clinics and it's an absolute nightmare. They've got all these different sort of things that have never been sharpened. <laughs> um, and the reason why they've never been sharpened is that the dentists are not doing, they're not doing root planing. You don't need a sharp uh, scaler to be able to just get calculus off, gross calculus from buying front teeth. Um, Azim, do you have a sharpener? Yes. You do. Okay, because the others here have got sharpeners because I gave sent them, I sent them from England. Okay. It's it's oh. available on Amazon. They are available on Amazon? Yeah. Oh. I wish you I'd known that before. Um They should be sharpened after every use. Um, my problem now is because I've still got my clinic uh, next to where I'm sitting, um, if I want to go and take a photograph of a 1718S scaler, they're all worn down so much because I've sharpened them so much, they aren't very good for photographs. Um, so this is the kit you need. Um, the the stone is the important thing. The uh, emery paper here is just to sort of finish off and get rid of the uh, uh, the sharp bits of metal that are left, which you can't actually see. So what what post what postness of the this roller uh, you use? What's the specification of this roller stone? Because there are many, and I've used many. Not all are good. Um, just look at this a minute, okay? Yeah. Uh, you, see, you see the curve of the 1718S? It needs to fit into that curve. Just uh, one second. Just one moment. Um, you notice uh, on the bottom of this slide, it says cannot be uh, play media. Uh, they've done something to PowerPoint, which screws up presentations like this. Um, Still doesn't play
<coughs> okay. So the the uh, the shape of that stone needs to be the same as that curve of the of the instrument. Then you do the sides like this. Then you take the uh, memory paper. So Tejasa wants to join for the meeting. Sorry. So uh, Tejasa uh, requested to join for the meeting, sir. In the Thank group. It's the right curve for this one as well, as in. Yeah. Let me know, uh, Tejas, when you've joined, okay? Um, you can tell whether they're sharp or not, because um, when you're root planing, you start off by hearing a squeak. Uh, Sadi, yeah. yes? I need to take this call. It's my uh, son's pediatrician. Okay, right. We'll see you in a minute. Uh, Siley, you know the squeak, do you, when you when you root plane or not? Ah, uh, yes. That's an Ashwin, yes. Uh, I mean, I've uh, assisted a periodontist, and I have felt that uh, I've tried to do the root planing, but I'm not very confident. Um, compared to some of the things you do in implantology and crown and bridge work, this is easy, simple. Um, have okay. you seen this video, teachers? Yes. Okay. Um, Sally, uh, can you take your 1718S and just sharpen it now? That's on the flat surface, isn't it? Yeah, keep doing it, okay? Yes. Yeah. I would keep the instrument still and, and move the stone. Okay. Okay. Or whichever is convenient. Now do the sides. You can go both ways, um, hey Jess. That's it, that's good. And now wow, the sides. it's so sharp. It is? Now what? Now it's sharp. Yes. 
Good. That's it. Okay. And have you got have you got your 17, 13, 14 there? Yes. Okay. How many each of the two instruments do you have? Just one. Just one. Yeah. Set. Uh, you really need three so that you can uh, be sterilizing, okay. you know, between patients. Otherwise, uh, if you've just used them on the previous patient, you're a bit stuck. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, to start with, I would use the 1718S. And, and this patient's got a buccal infiltration and palatal inf infiltrations. Okay. Somebody was telling me, was it you, Azim, that you used surface anesthetic? Sorry, come again. Did you tell me that you used surface anesthetic for this? No. It wasn't you. Okay. Oh, no. Somebody I did just... a nice. I either inflate, infiltrate or I don't use. There's yeah. no point doing surface and infiltration. No, no. Um, I would certainly want, wouldn't want, I, I would want complete anesthesia if I was having it done. Um, I had this done in 19, uh, 1969 at Northwestern Dental School, Chicago, by the professor of, um, of uh, periodontics. I don't think I needed it, but he did it. Um, okay, so just getting all the granulation tissue out and then uh, using this sort of excavator. Uh, this is the only excavator I ever had uh, after I got wise. Um, Sebastian, a good friend of mine uh, in Kerala, um, has about 15 different uh, um, excavators, all of which are bent and old. <laughs> um, can you get this guy's hotel, uh, this, this G2 in India? Do they call it G2 or not? It's a guy's hospital pattern uh, excavator. So I then go around and curette with the uh, with the uh, scaler. Um, by the time I've finished, I've got rid of virtually all the granulation tissue. And the main thing is you've turned this situation from a chronic infection to a surgical wound, which heals a lot better. Um, I now use the uh, ultrasonic scaler um, and then I use the uh, 1718S to scale up and down like this. Now, uh, those of you who've got scalers there, well done, Abby, um, take a pen or a pencil and go up and down, watching this, okay? All this. Uh, Abby, um, Abby, just watch me. You have to go like this. Not, not like this. So that the uh, blade, that's it, that's better, okay? Like that, okay? Now, if you're, if you're doing this um, uh, on all the surfaces, um, you'll notice that um, 
the, the American uh, prostodont, uh, periodontal people uh, say you have to go up and down 20 times. Uh, that's a little bit sort of unintelligent because it's a case of when the squeak stops, then you know you've done it okay, all right? Have we got Siley with us still? No, we're missing Siley. Uh, Siley, ma'am, is waiting to join. Sir. She's joining now. Thank you. I just want to go back. Sally, when you're ready. Now, Sally, take a pencil or a pen. Sally? Yes, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Okay, take a pencil or a pen and watch this video, okay? Okay. I'll do this. Uh, in the mouth, you'd be resting. That, yeah. Okay, it's it's like when you're sharpening, exactly the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I love it if um, you would uh, each of you. Uh, email me when you've heard that squeak, if you haven't heard it before, okay? So, um, I would be, after doing the ultrasonic scalar, I then go in with this scalar and go up and down, up and down, and then go to the uh, Gracie 1314 and do the same thing. Up and down the roots. Then I would curette granulation tissue again. In my experience, having got to this stage, you see bits of granulation tissue around. So then you can do a bit more of a, um, um, a removal of the granulation tissue. Now in the mandible, I would allow about an hour and a quarter, hour and a half, probably an hour and a half. Um, to get good anesthesia and then to do the scaling and then in the upper probably about the same amount of time then i would i'd uh, correct with the scalar again getting out granulation tissue i might then do a bit more ultrasonic scaling then i explain to the patient they're not going to be able to clean this area very well uh, for about one to two weeks. It's going to be uncomfortable. Uh, is there any benefit of uh, suturing after curating? Absolute waste of time. <laughs> Don't need to. Uh, not unless you need suturing practice. Okay. Um, would, it, would it make a difference with the outcome? No, absolutely not. No. No. Um, well, I, I can't tell you that, but I mean, that's, that's my assumption. Okay. 
um, uh, you'd have to do um, you'd have to do one quadrant like this and one quadrant with sutures and see if it did. But I, I really don't think it's necessary. Um, unless you're a periodontist and you have to justify uh, what you're doing. Yeah. Um, then in two weeks time, I see them again, and get them back to Even clean. if you have raised, raised Sorry. a flap. Sorry? So how, why, why is suturing not needed? No, we're not, we're not raising a flap here. You haven't raised a flap. We're just removing the granulation tissue. Yeah, just clear it out. Okay. I mean, you should be able and to, under local anesthetic, you should be able to put the 17, 18 in, uh, S there and scrape all the way okay. around to bone. Okay. And then take okay. your, your excavator and scrape around as well. And then having... Okay. Uh, having um, done the uh, scaling, the root planing with those two instruments, uh, when you go back in to, uh, to uh, cure it again, you've got much more feel for the anatomy. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you, uh, um, but I, I don't think it matters that you get every darn uh, uh, granulation bit of cells out so long as you've created a a wound once you've got the wound there the body reacts to uh, to to repair it so you start them back to cleaning again and at this stage i'd give them a wider incidental brush because the spaces are bigger okay then one month later I would do another, oh. I would, um, one month after this, I would do um, the, uh, um, I would do another bleeding index, okay? So then you see, um, how much improvement is in that quadrant? Okay. Um, you reevaluate a month later and check the scan curatage, um, do a gum check, check the cleaning, and he's gone down quite well. Um, in next visit, scan curatage upper left. And I removed the upper left uh, premolar, partly because uh, if I tried to root plane it, it would have come out anyway with the scalar, because it was the bone loss. Tell him again that he won't be able to clean too well, and then start him back two weeks later, and then reevaluate a months later, do a scale and curatage and see how much improvement there is. Then do the scale and curatage uh, on the upper, the upper left. So this can take, um, you know, about a year, okay? Doesn't matter. Uh, as I said, you've got some patients who are good patients who will want to go through this, okay? Do your best with the rest of the patients. Uh, so this is this is how he progressed, and here I've got on the uh, bleeding index sheet um, uh, where I'm where he's using the difference in dental brushes. You've got these bleeding index sheets, have you, Sally? Yes. You, you have, okay. What do you do about this? Because you're computerized, Tejas. Take a picture and upload it. But you, you do have a, um, you do have the printed sheets. Yes. 
Right. Okay. So then uh, I put in an implant in the upper anterior region. I reduced the pontic. The, the problem, um, this was the one, Tejas, where I put in some, I, I took the denture tooth off and glued it in place. I put some wires at the back. It is inconvenient uh, because you have to take the damn thing off and then put it back again. But if I were the patient, this is what I would want. Um, also, you have to make sure that the pontic is not touching the implant. Also, you're charging by time, so it's worth it. Exactly. Yes, I mean, this is another one. Um, uh, uh, Azim, uh, unless you unless you have an hourly rate charging system, what are you going to do for a scan and cure charge? It's an hour and a quarter, or an hour, or whatever you want to do. Um, mm. You have to just guess at the figure. Um, uh, Tejas, uh, um, Azim has, has, has uh, been using the hourly rate system for this sort of thing for what, five months? Azim? We've lost him for a minute. Um, you haven't got round to the hourly rate system yet, as uh, Tejas. Not yet. I'm going to spend uh, an hour or two with you sometime, okay? And okay. I'd want you to bring your, uh, your appointment book. Okay. Are you... Are you in any way near the stage you were before the uh, COVID? Yes. You are? Okay. So, Sorry, you were saying something? I missed it. Sorry? You said something? You're talking to uh, me? Yes. How long have you been using the hourly rate for this sort of thing? Uh, it's almost all, more than six months. I think seven, eight months. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you bring your, um, uh, what you need, which is the um, uh, the appointment book or your computer, on your computer, you, you can do that at home, can you? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, and we'll work out the hourly rate, okay? On the, um, on a spreadsheet. My, my, the biggest phobia is, uh, uh, once I convert to the early rate, I fear uh, earning less money than before. Uh, I don't know, maybe that's blocking. It's, it's like a blocker, I'm not sure. Oh, you earn more money. I'm not suggesting you do it necessarily for fillings and things, which I would do, I did. But if you do it for the, um, uh, for the plot uh, removal uh, training and the, um, uh, and for scale and curatage and things like that. Okay. If you've got the sheet on your wall and you've just spent 35 minutes, you look at the sheet, 35 minutes, and you put down the fee. Okay. Otherwise, you have to go through some sort of mental guesswork. Okay. Yeah. The first hurdle is to get the, the, uh, the bleeding, the, um, the hourly rate system going. Okay, um, and and then start using it for for things like, you know, uh, say you do some cleaning for somebody, or you know, small things. I mean, if you go to the stage of using it for uh, the fillings, which I would do, um, that's much easier. You know, big filling, long time. I cannot get over so many things in India makes me just cry sometimes. Um, the fact that you charge the same thing for a single root, root canal treatment as you do for a four uh, root canal molar tooth, I think is insane. I mean, the incentive to do 
that fourth canal is is just that, that really I don't know anyway <laughs> um but you see how many times I'm checking the gums okay so uh this patient really knows that I'm keen on them getting their gums healthy yeah now he's now he's got to zero and I haven't got the, I can't remember the date of the first appointment. Uh, but this is probably maybe a year and a half later. You know, it's, um, it's a totally different concept to, um, you know, yeah, I've, I've, I've talked to people um, in, in India about, um, they, they want to do as much as they can on the patient before they lose the patient. Um, I'll do as much as I can today because he might not come back next week. Um, getting over that neurosis. Um, it's rather like the neurosis that uh, Eldo had, that people, if you want to take, if you want to take x-rays of them, they think you're just trying to make money. <laughs> so you start up with all these neuroses, which shit. Uh, um, I'm sorry that Ashwin, Ashwin isn't with us because um, there are a number of things that he was like that with to start with, and now he's found it um, a lot easier. Now he's become more confident. Um, now, after all that time, I'm now giving the patient an estimate for the sinus graph. Uh, I have I talked to you about. Azim, have I talked to you about my treatment plan? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, I, I was absolutely allergic to seeing a patient, taking x-rays, examining them, and then the next visit, giving them a bloody great estimate for all their treatment. When at that stage, you don't know what you're going to find after you take fillings out and things, whether you've got, you know, you need to do root canal treatments that you didn't expect. Um, so this is about a year and a half later that I'm actually uh, uh, talking about sinus grafting. Now, at this stage, his dental IQ is so much better than it was. Um, so you see he's maintaining that zero uh, bleeding index. And uh, after a while of actually... I mean, can you imagine being turned on by doing pocket depths rather than bleeding indexes? I mean, great, you know. Um, I mean, unless you do bleeding index, you don't get that enthusiasm for uh, uh, the reduction, and nor does the patient get that enthusiasm. Um, now we come to this tooth here, and I offered him uh, root canal treatment of the mesial canals and removal of the distant root, which I remember doing back in the days when I was in Canada, because back then I didn't do um, do, do implants. Um, but if that patient had said yes, fine, I would have done that. Uh, or do an implant. Uh, or um, do the uh, root canal treatment, um, remove the distal root, recrown the tooth, and then 10 years later do an implant. You actually make more money out of it. Um, the patient wanted to do the job properly, so I took it out. Um, next visit, upper left sinus graft with a radiated bone. Uh, this is before. Uh, oh, be aware of uh, the, the distortion of the panoramic x-ray. Um, a friend of mine has just done a ridge repositioning in the lower anterior region, and he put in two implants. Uh, later on, 
and uh, they both look as if they're cutting off the roots of the teeth uh, on either side. So I've asked him to take, uh, get the patient in and take some x-rays at different angles. Um, if you take periapicals at different angles, it uh, just makes you feel a bit better. Um, with the radiated bone, it's quite disappointing because you don't really see much. Okay. Now, I've done a proper full uh, sinus graft here, okay? Not just, a, a, a just for that one tooth, mainly because um, you never know. I, I did a, a sort of mini uh, um, sinus graft for a patient yeah, for a premolar, and then uh, six months later, he lost one of the molars. So I had to go back in again and do another sinus graft. So that's a complete sinus graft. So I'm checking him again. Um, I accept that some people might need a bit of a scale and polish, but that to me is a sign of, of bad brushing or bad cleaning. So that was when it was healed. Two roots, two implants. That's the uh, premolar restored. And this is the central incisor. Now, I then did some bite wings. This was him when he started, one year and four months before. And I'd admitted, omitted to take bite wings. So, <coughs> had to do root canal treatments, core buildups. So, <coughs> I think all patients should have bite wings done. Uh, in this case, um, premolar bite wings, molar bite wings, left and right side, once a year at least. And periapicals of these two once a year. Okay. Maybe this patient, uh, after a while, would be suitable for being checked up once every year and a half. That's just a difficult to administer. Okay. Um, so, uh, so I have a doubt, sir. Uh, so in that X-ray, uh, what restriction you gave so after the root canal? Uh, what was that, Tejas? So after I, I I saw the X-ray, sir. After you did the root canal treatment, I yes. just wanted to know what the restriction you gave sir, after the endodontic treatment, sir. They just did you get that in your in your last case that you showed up there the yeah the root canal after the bite wing you saw the root canal you had to do the root canals yeah uh, what what restoration is that post endodontically oh uh, gold uh, these are amalgam cores okay. Um, I think I crowned the teeth afterwards, okay? Um, whether you use amalgam cores or uh, uh, core materials, um, um, I, uh, I don't think it matters personally. Um, yes. If you use the... Uh, if you etch the surfaces uh, of the cavity and you put on uh, bonding material, bonding uh, liquid, 
and then you put amalgam in. Do they does it glue? No. Doesn't no. Okay, so um, if you use a core material, it would bond, which yes. has some advantage. Okay. But if you've got uh, posts in there uh, holding the uh, amalgam filling in place, then I don't think it makes any difference. Okay. Does that answer your question, uh, Anna? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had a doubt whether it's uh, on lay or something, so, so I just asked. No, I think in this case, I probably did uh, full crowns. Okay, sir. Gold. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, how many gold restorations have you done now, Tejas? Nine. Five? Nine. Sorry? Nine. Nine. Yeah. Uh, Sally, have you done any gold crowns and things? No. Have you done porcelain crowns? Not yet. I find I find I make less money on gold restorations than than porcelain and zirconia restorations. Uh, why is that? Uh, maybe I have a phobia to charge more. Yeah. Just, uh, are you giving zirconia restrictions on a regular basis? Like, is yes. it good, good to give some? Like... I mean, definitely. Yeah. The material has indications, and it's good if it's if you choose the case properly. But yes, uh, I, I always um, feel I'm making less money on gold restorations. Um, just one second. Uh, what's the difference in the lab fee? I mean the. The, the preparation time and the fitting time is going to be the same, isn't it? Yes. Uh, the lab fee, is, uh, lab fee is a standard for gold. It's like 2,500 rupees plus uh, GST. And plus the cost of gold. That's the weight of gold. And for a... Uh... What are the what other crown materials do you for, use? For a, a good zirconia crown, it's like uh, say forty five hundred to forty eight hundred rupees. Is the lab fee. So what's the difference? The patient uh, only the material and the lab costs is around thirty five thousand rupees for a gold crown. So what's the difference? Uh, yeah, what's the difference in the the, the lab fee gold crown? And the zirconium, about uh, ten times, say, about yeah, thirty thousand rupees. Thirty thousand rupees. Yes. Not Just the laptop, sir. But... Rather go for an implant, sir, in India. Wait, how much you say zirconium? What is? Uh, 4200 to 4800 depending on the the brand of zirconium. So 4500 on an average. Help me, 4200, is that 42 with two zeros? Yes. Yeah. And the gold? About 38,000. Yeah, 38,000 to 40,000. Plus, plus gold. No, that's with the no, gold. Includes with the gold. No, it's less. Sorry? So it's less. What's less? So you got 4,200 for the zirconium. Yes. And then 4,800 for the gold. 40 40,000, 40,000, 40,000, about 10 times. It's ridiculous. I mean, you're including that in your estimate? Yes. So if you're including, if you're including it in your estimate, you should be making the same amount of money. No, I, I make less amount of money. Uh, because 
uh, see, I charge a fixed fee for gold. Like there is the cost of the, the lab cost uh, plus my charges, the clinical charges. And if I if I remove the lab charge from a zirconia crown, my clinical charges end up being much higher than a gold crown. How much mental fiscal drag is there in that? Do you know mental fiscal drag, Anand? Uh, somewhat, sir. Not. Uh... Okay. You think four thousand, and you say to the patient, three thousand. That's mental fiscal drag. She's too yeah. hurt. Sorry to interrupt. But a good gold crown in a very standard practice will cost around at least 50,000, 45,000 to 50,000, including the surgeon's fees. Okay. And in this amount, a very decent implant can be placed. That's what patient normally says, normally tells you. So that so this, this is a, this is one big reason why we do very less gold crowns, because the patient is not ready to pay that kind of amount. Which patient? The patient that drives up in his uh, Mercedes in, Benz? In the Jaguars, yes. The patient in the Jaguars and, and in the Maybachs and everything. That's the, the, the psychological injuries that you all get from treating patients has an influence on your decision making. <laughs> See, it's our job to give them the options. That's what we do. You give them the option. Yeah, I always give them the option of golden zirconia crowns or whatever is suitable for them, yeah. so whatever they want. I, we cannot afford to lose you know, zirconia crown just because we want to give them gold crowns. So we have to run clinics. So if they are not okay with gold crowns, I'll give them zirconia crowns. And zirconia oh, crowns yeah. make, make you more I mean, money. Ultimate, than gold ultimately, crowns. you're doing what the patient wants. As long as you give them the choices. If you don't give them the choices because it's too expensive, then they're, you're, uh, that's not morally good. Um, I mean, what would you do for your, uh, uh, for your wife? You do a, uh, one. you do a zirconium because it's expensive because you're a cheap bastard. <laughs> Okay. Um, I've suggested that possibly um, uh, I'm going away for about three weeks uh, in about 10 days. So um, when I get back in October, we'll have another session, okay? Um, Oh, but by the you got that message about uh, brochures. Um, we, we tend to make brochures from a point of view of knowing why, you know, why people should have an equilibration. Um, but the punter out there doesn't know why they need an equilibration. Um, so, uh, how have you done with your uh, your brochure? Uh, is it is it nearly ready? Mine is ready. I just need to change the dates. Yeah, that 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 was going to be an hour after I spoke to you on the phone this morning. I sent it to my designer. He's yet to get back. If I could have it tomorrow, I can start sending it out. Yes, you'll have it tomorrow. Yeah, and yours as soon as possible, um, Azim. You know when you can fit it into your busy schedule. I've, I've just come back from hospital today, so yeah, no, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So I'll do. I'll do it tomorrow. That'd be great. Okay, doc. Sharda is not here. She. You know, she yeah. Okay, doc. Uh, the sooner I can have them, the sooner I can send them out. Obviously. Okay, doc. All right. So we're meeting in October again. Yeah, I'll be in touch. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Cheers, Sally. Cheers, Anand. Cheers. Thank you. Azim.
Uh, well, let me know. Let yeah. me know when you've done a scan kirtan with somebody. Okay. Yes, definitely. The uh, prize will be a big hug from Anand. Okay. <laughs> uh, Anand will be hugging Anand. <laughs> yes. You have to well, do some pra practicing, Anand. <laughs> Preparation. Okay, I'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Okay, sir. Cheers, Anand. Take care. Bye, bye. Bye, Cheers. bye, sir. Have a great day. Bye.